What's up guys, this is Austin Burke, five foot nine, and he has a 46 inch vertical off one foot and a 44 inch vertical off two feet. And today he's gonna give you guys five tips that he's used to being able to dunk at five foot nine. Let's get it. First tip is to normalize dunking. Most people romanticize the act of dunking when it should just be something you view as a normal activity. If you cannot see something in your head, it's not gonna happen physically. So you have to be able to believe it's possible and it's not this giant grandiose gesture, which is dunking. No matter what people say, you gotta believe it here first. The second tip is to relax. Um, my best dunk sessions, my best jump days, I've always been super relaxed. Um, any days that I was tense or trying too hard or really you know, crunched up and looked like I was constipated, I jumped terribly. Um, a good example of this is anytime there's an event, um, the events that I perform better at are the events that I'm relaxed and excited and ready to dunk. The events that I do poorly at are the ones where I feel pressured, tense, and try I'm trying too hard. So the third tip is proper training. A good balance between jumping a lot and strength tra training will go a long way. So when I'm jumping my best off one foot, I typically load the earlier parts of the week. So Monday's gonna be more intense. My Wednesday lift is gonna be a little bit, you know, in between moderate, not too difficult. And then Friday is typically an easier lift. And then Saturday is my jump day. That allows me to jump pretty much close to max intensity and get a lot of good reps in. So in terms of my two foot, I typically jump the best when I um, have a very difficult training cycle and then I deload. The stronger I am, the higher I jump off two foot. I don't know about you guys, but these are some amazing pieces of advice. And you could get pieces of advice like that from us every single day by signing up for THP. So if you're interested in that, go to thpstrength.com and apply. And let's get back to the video. All right, so my fourth tip is about recovery, specifically stretching and isometrics. I always jump my best and feel my best when my hamstrings are loose, my hips are loose, um, and my knee doesn't hurt. So these are the three stretches that I do pretty much on a daily basis. I like to hold this for about two minutes a day. Um, and the reason I like this is because it's pretty easy. All you need is a wall. It doesn't take a lot of effort. And you can just play on your phone, call your mama, do whatever you gotta do. The second stretch to do is this one right here. Um, you apply a little pressure to the knee and you hold this for about a minute and a half each side. Um, and this one's also pretty easy and low effort and makes you feel good. All right, so the third stretch is pretty common. It's a couch stretch. Um, once again, it's for us lazy stretchers, so I typically watch TV, do two minutes on each side, loosens up my hips, makes me feel good. The last part of recovery is isometrics. Um, these make my knees feel good. I try to do them every day, and it helps me jump better because my knees feel good. You feel good, you jump good. You feel good, you jump good. Simple equation. Feel good, jump good. What? I'm not sure how isos work. I just blindly follow my friends. In the last tip, if you have hands of a sugar glider, baby lemur, or possibly a sloth, and you can't palm a basketball just like me, you have to learn how to manipulate basketball in the air. All right, so when I go off one foot, um, I don't necessarily have a conventional approach, but what I like to do is cuff the ball like this and use momentum to keep the ball in my hand. And you can just walk around practicing that, and this is a drill you can do to work on that. So you kinda, woo, and I'm not palming the ball at all. If my tips helped you, go to thpstrength.com and I'll help you even more.